In this tutorial, we will teach you some basic theory about drone mapping. To join our global pilot network, register at inflights.com slash pilot. So what is drone mapping then? Drone mapping is a common name for photogrammetry with a drone. But let's see Wikipedia's definition first. Photogrammetry is the art, science and technology of obtaining reliable information about physical objects and the environment through the process of recording, measuring and interpreting photographic images and patterns of electromagnetic radiant imagery and other phenomena. The simplified definition is the extraction of spatial measurements and other mathematical products from two-dimensional data, for example photographs. How does drone mapping work? There are three main steps in every photogrammetry project. First, we capture the dataset that contains hundreds or even tens of thousands of images, depending on the project size. To do this, we use the drone that is equipped with a camera. Additionally, we use ground control points to georeference the project in an accurate way. Then, the dataset is processed in photogrammetry software to create various products, like orthomosaic, point cloud or 3D model. For some projects, there is post-processing phase where we post-process the orthomosaic, point cloud and DSM into more advanced outputs. Outputs like line work, thin surface and much more. After that, the data can be delivered to the client in various file formats or in an online viewer. In this tutorial series, we will focus on the first phase that can be divided into many sub-steps, like planning the photogrammetry flight and its parameters, planning the ground control points location, marking and measuring the ground control points, executing the photogrammetry flight, and inspecting the dataset quality. So how does UAV photogrammetry software work? Photogrammetry software such as Pix4D Mapper or Agisoft uses multiple images to determine the location of a point in space. To do this it uses the parallax effect. The parallax is a visible shift in an object's position when it's viewed from two different angles. It allows us to compute the distance to the object and its size. This is why in drone mapping we take a lot of images with big overlap. To do this we use a drone that is equipped with a camera and GPS antenna. Additionally, we can use ground control points to georeference the projects in an accurate way. For drone mapping, almost always the images are geotagged. This means that the drone records its position when it takes each image based on its GPS receiver data. Next, the photogrammetry software aligns the images based on their location, capture time and some other data to find similar looking features in image pairs. After enough matches are found, the software produces a point cloud. The point cloud is a 3D representation of the mapped area. Each point has its own X, Y and Z coordinates and its color value. From the point cloud, the software generates all the other outputs. What is project's accuracy? Accuracy can be divided into relative and global accuracy. The relative or local accuracy is the accuracy within the project itself. This means that the project maintains scale and lets you take accurate basic measurements. In other words, if distance between two points measures 10 meters in real world, it also measures 10 meters on the map or 3D model. The global or absolute accuracy is the accuracy for the project in relation to other geospatial data, like maps and drawings. For the project to be georeferenced, we use ground control points, or GCPs in short, and precise GPS receivers on the drone itself to geotag the photos. To use photogrammetric outputs in surveying, construction, planning and architecture, we need to precisely georeference the project in a given coordinate reference system. Most clients will need the georeference photogrammetry outputs for precise distance, area and volume measurement, creating survey maps, overlaying other georeferenced data, as a planning underlay for other engineering projects. 
non-georeferenced projects or incorrectly georeferenced projects shouldn't be used for measuring. They can be used for visualization purposes only. The level of accuracy depends on the client's needs. But let's look at some examples. For a pretty 3D model for marketing purposes, you don't have to worry about the accuracy at all. Most of the time, for real estate projects, the relative accuracy is enough. Sometimes the global accuracy can be worse, for example 10 cm for basic ortho map. Usually, for measurements and surveying maps, the client may require global accuracy around 5 cm in the XYZ axis. In some cases, the client will require very high accuracy. This is below 2 cm. This mostly happens for building restoration works. Remember that the higher accuracy level, the more work you will have to put into the project. Here are some important definitions for this part of the tutorial. Spatial reference system or coordinate reference system determines the relative position of points within the survey area with respect to a much larger area. Most coordinate systems in surveying use three numbers or coordinates x, y and z to uniquely determine the position of the points or other geometric elements. There are many coordinate reference systems, so to match the client's expectations, you should know what coordinate reference system the client is using. Each known coordinate reference system has a name and EPSG number. You can check the name of EPSG number and the coordinate reference system at spatialreference.org. Most times you will use two coordinate systems for your outputs in one project. One coordinate system is for horizontal XY coordinates. Second one is for vertical coordinates Z axis. More about coordinate reference systems will be in the next part of this tutorial series. Average GSD or ground sampling distance. The distance between two neighboring pixels centers measured on the ground. The bigger the value of the GSD, the lower the spatial resolution of the outputs. For example, the picture on the left has a bigger GSD value than the picture on the right. The difference between those outputs is visible at first glance. GSD affects the accuracy of the outputs. The lower the GSD value, the more accurate can the project be georeferenced. As a rule of thumb for every project, the horizontal accuracy is around 2 times its GSD. The vertical accuracy is around 3 times GSD. The value of average GSD is influenced by flight altitude above the ground level. The lower you fly, the lower the GSD. Focal length of the camera lens. The longer the focal length, the lower the GSD value. Sensor size. The bigger the sensor, the better. Sensor resolution. The more megapixels the camera has, the better. Terrain elevation difference. This affects the distance between camera and the ground, just as the flight altitude. Camera angle. If the camera is tilted, the GSD value increases. To quickly calculate the GSD, you can use the flight planning app for your drone and camera. Now let's talk about overlap of the images. Overlap value describes how much the neighboring images cover each other. There are two types of overlap, frontal overlap and side overlap. The recommended overlap value depends on the terrain elevation difference and height of the obstacles, for example buildings or trees. The higher the overlap value, the better accuracy can be achieved. We recommend a minimum of 75% in forward lap and 70% in side lap to get satisfactory results in photogrammetry software for a flat terrain. More overlap results in significant increase in the number of images taken, and this leads to a longer processing time in photogrammetry software. It is important to maintain overlap on the edges of the area of interest. This is why photogrammetry missions should be bigger than the area of interest. Ground control points, or in short GCPs. Those are precisely measured points to which project is linked. GCPs must be clearly visible on drone images. GCPs must be properly distributed over the whole area of interest. 
precisely marked and measured using survey grade tools. Check out our YouTube channel for an in-depth tutorial about ground control points. There are several factors that can affect the accuracy of the georeferencing of the project. Usually, those factors overlap and transmit the error to a finer photogrammetric outputs. For example, image quality, low quality images will produce worse output accuracy. Drone GPS receiver accuracy, built-in RTK or PPK receivers provide more accurate results than the regular drone GPS. GCP distribution pattern, optimal geometry of ground control point placement throughout the area of the project. GCP measurement accuracy, this is how accurate you measured the GCPs using the surveying equipment. GCP visibility in photos. GCPs should be marked in places with unobstructed sky view. GCPs center should be easily identified on drawn images. Average GSD. The smaller value of GSD, the better accuracy can be achieved. Image overlap. The bigger value of the overlap, the better accuracy can be achieved. You will have to balance all those factors in order to achieve good accuracy and optimize time spent for the drone flight and processing time. We can perform many operations using photogrammetry data, such as visualization of the data. We can look at the data set from every angle. Measurements, we can measure areas, distances and volumes. We can generate terrain profiles. We can monitor changes over time. We can extract terrain details. This is called vectorization or line work. We can use photogrammetry data as a planning underlay, for example, in 3D planning. Water flow calculation, feature detection and analysis. Inspecting the photogrammetry data set. InFlights has developed a free data checker tool for photogrammetry terrain mapping flights. Just go to your web browser and use this link app.inflights.com slash check. The data checker checks camera name, flight altitude and camera angles, time and duration of the flight, geotag accuracy, motion blur, camera settings for each image, image location on the map, area of interest coverage, and more. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.